If you've ever watched a science fiction flick, you would have been exposed to ideas such as wormholes, faster than light hyperdrives, stargates that portal you into another point in space. These are all the result of sci-fi writers making galactic travel seem as simple as catching the bus from point A to point B. But what these movies, TV shows, and books seldom cover is what happens if you travel faster than light. What happens when time dilates? Stick around and we will go through what astronomers and scientists believe happens to humans and time itself when traveling at such speeds. Before Albert Einstein enlightened us with his theories like the theory of relativity, it was commonly believed that time just existed in the present, now, that it could not be pulled, pushed, or prodded. It was thought that time could go forward at the same rate for all observers, despite being on a light speed spaceship or watching one fly by. But this is simply not the case. Einstein's theories help show us that everyone holds their own watch in space-time. Whether you are zipping by in a light-speed craft or aboard the ISS, everyone has their own watches with their own perception of time moving. We can imagine space and time together as space-time, a four-dimensional plane of existence. It hurts the mind to think about, but it is necessary to understand the concept of time dilation. Time dilation states that the faster that someone goes, the slower time seems to pass for the person traveling relative to someone that is stationary. For example, sending astronauts on a journey to Proxima Centauri b at light speed and waiting one year on Earth would only feel like one day for the astronauts aboard the light speed vessel. Imagine being one of those astronauts having a son or daughter and regrettably embarking on a two-month journey aboard the light speed vessel. You spend 30 days aboard to go to a distant star and 30 days to go back to Earth. When you return, you find your child is 60 years of age and is now older than you are. It is expected that such paradoxes will make it hard to find astronauts and volunteers for these journeys, unless, of course, their friends and family can come with them. Is it possible to exceed the speed of light? Not really. Then it would just be traveling back in time. Think of it like this. You are looking at an old school clock against a wall, taking the seconds along with a hand. You jump into a spacecraft and travel away at the speed of light, but look back and watch the clock. Because you are running away at the same speed that light is reflecting off the clock hand, it will appear that the clock is stuck in time. If you exceed the speed of light, then the hands of the clock begin to rotate backwards. It is unlikely to see the effects of time dilation when traveling at high speeds, unless we truly achieve some speed near that of light. Even at half the speed of light, an incredibly fast speed that is barely even conceivable, time dilation only occurs at a factor of around 1.1547. Only once something is traveling at a speed of 0.9 that of light, we can begin to see long-term dilation. This is because the time dilation factor grows exponentially. We know that time dilation is a real phenomenon because in 1971, Joseph Haffel and Richard Keating completed what is now known as the Haffel-Keating experiment which tested the theory of relativity. The tests were relatively simple. They put four atomic clocks aboard airliners and were then flown around the globe and compared them with clocks left in the US Naval Observatory. What they found was that all the sets of clocks seemed to vary with each other and therefore confirmed general relativity. Given the hypothesized scenario that we do in fact complete travel to another star using light speed, this has some serious ethical implications and philosophical questions. Humans have never been such far distances away from one another. After millions of years, it is likely that the two groups of humans within each solar system will likely evolve independently of one another. In fact, maybe one group will eventually not be human anymore. Imagine this. One group remains relatively human on Earth, but the other group at the Proxima Centauri star system begins to evolve rapidly because of evolutionary pressures, such as lower available oxygen in the atmosphere or lower gravitational forces pulling them down. Our species that has been so accustomed to life on Earth and her temperatures, gravity and weather may find it tough to survive on a new world and only the toughest flourish, leading to an eventual trait selection until everyone living on the new planet looks completely unfamiliar. As we have discussed, the sheer length of space between two stars is hard to comprehend. At best, it may take four years to send a text message back to Earth, meaning if you sent a text to your parents back at home that you are starting college, by the time they receive it, you may have finished college and have been working for a year out of school. Such smaller implications arise from when humans finally achieve light speed. Even traveling at light speed makes it difficult to reach distant stars and galaxies. Such a feat would likely require the discovery of a wormhole. This is because following the law of entropy that has been occurring since the Big Bang, 
space between stars and galaxies is forever growing as the bubble of the universe expands and everything within it spreads out. Stars in our night sky that seem close are forever gradually becoming more and more distant from us. Chasing them into space with a spaceship going light speed may not even be possible, as we can never truly catch up to the rate of accelerating expansion. The we are the aliens problem. The problem is a hypothetical issue that will arise depending on our advancement of technology. Think about how quickly humans change from listening to music on vinyl, then CD, then .mp3, and now Spotify. This has only happened over a few decades. Imagine the sort of rapid advancement multiplied by 5,000 years. As mentioned, imagine when we first start the aforementioned journey of 30 days at light speed. Our current technology in spaceships only allows humans to travel at half the speed of light so it will take 60 days. So we send out these astronauts at half the speed of light. But 15 years later, we develop full light speed and we send more astronauts out. These astronauts with new technology will still reach a distant star faster than those traveling at half the speed of light. By the time they arrive, the astronauts with newer technology would have already colonized the planet and the arduous journey, as well as leaving their friends and family behind to rapidly age, would have been in vain for the original astronauts who left first and when they finally do arrive on the new distant world, years after we have already conquered it, they will likely be initially mistaken for aliens. Another paradox to keep in mind is the twin paradox. This was brought about when someone once questioned that if I'm flying away from the Earth at light speed, then isn't the Earth flying away from me at those speeds simultaneously? Firstly, there is no such thing as the present when comparing things in different reference frames. Flying away from Earth at such speeds would mean that both people on Earth and people on the ship going away are experiencing time passing slower for themselves than the other party, since the other is moving from the other party. As long as the spaceship flies away forever in a straight line, this is fine. Each party can say that time is going slower than the other party. But if the spaceship hits a 180 degree turn and comes back to Earth, their reference frame has changed because velocity has changed, speed and direction. Now, the present on Earth has become a different time. More time has passed on Earth than on the ship. This is because less time has passed on the ship as the reference frame for the ship was continuous, but Earth stayed with the same reference frame. In summary, it is the acceleration that the ship undergoes when turning which gets rid of the symmetry that leads to the paradox. That's about it when trying to understand the very basics of time dilation and what happens when trying to exceed light speed. Other than understanding the laws of physics itself, there are many paradoxes and problems that arise when playing with such large-scale speeds and time. Could you leave everyone, everything you know behind as well as the very decade, your home and everything familiar to you behind in the pursuit of interstellar travel? Do you believe that such advancements in human technology allowing for space travel will happen in our lifetimes? Let us know in the comments below.